All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, getting a few questions on how to install the G1000 into your panel. And so we took the RealSim Gear G1000 here. Uh, this is the latest RealSim Gear G1000. This is the Gen, uh, Gen 4. And we're gonna use this as an example as to how to actually install your G1000 in your Slavics uh, tabletop avionics panel. So we'll go ahead, we'll get started. Okay, so uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning back in here. We got a lot of different tutorials, videos. Uh, we got the, the new Virtual Fly switch -o, if you've seen that. We've got the new RealSim Gear G500. So a lot of awesome stuff hitting the market here in late 2022. So uh, once again, this is the RealSim Gear G1000. This is the Gen 4. I wanna talk about a few of the uh, improvements that actually RealSim Gear have made to this unit recently. Uh, some of those units include the back of the unit here actually has the USB the power and the HDMI, all here from the back. Previously, it was kind of underneath this little shelf and you had to access there, but now they're all right here in the back, all sticking out. So really, really great job there. Really clean, really nice job there. They've also here moved to a, I'll call brass, kind of threaded, female threaded, uh, kind of nut here uh, on in, in all four corners, okay? And so that's what actually is going to secure it to the panel. Uh, we provide all the hardware to actually secure the G1000 uh, um, bezels to the actual panel itself. So we give all that, so that's not an issue. Uh, here on the front side, a lot of uh, new enhancements. I, I think they've actually optimized the buttons just a little bit. They feel a lot better, a lot stiffer is how I would uh, kind of describe them. Uh, so they've, uh, they've done that. Uh, they're also kind of got a little bit of a different gloss to it they they do actually look a little bit more premium so uh so they did a nice job with the buttons and then they're also backlit as well in terms of the knobs uh these these all feel real good just like they kind of always have um so really nice bit there and then kind of just behind the display um just a really nice kind of matte finish screen so it just looks really good we're going to keep that protective layer on there for now uh once again these these are considered an xfd uh, so, you know, you got PFD, MFD, but that X is there is kind of just a, a, I would say flexible. You can put it here, either in the, the PFD slot or the MFD slot. So you can kind of pick one. In terms of how to actually install these uh, into the panel, we've got a, a panel example here. Uh, I want to do talk about one other RealSim Gear product. Uh, this here is their RealSim Gear generic switch panel. Uh, this kind of goes to the, the right side here. Uh, and this has got a lot of different things, fuel tank selector, trim wheel, gear, up down, flaps up down. It's got a parking brake switch, which is really nice. Uh, landing lights, fuel pump, it's, it's slick. It's the, the G1000 standby battery. It's got kind of like a dual function. You, you test it and then you arm it. And so you can do this test, you hold it for 10 seconds to make sure the standby battery works. So then you can go up and arm it. So it's kind of that same muscle memory thing with that switch there. You got bus one, two avionics. And then you got a starter switch. It's not a spring-loaded starter switch. I uh, would love to see a spring-loaded starter switch, but it, it's a starter switch, no less. Get your mags on there, left, right, magnetos, and things like that. So that's actually going to go uh, right here. So that'll look really nice, uh, just like that. And one thing that's really cool about this switch panel, it's actually backlit as well. Uh, so that's a backlit component too. So once again, we give all the screws and everything to actually secure that into the panel itself. Uh, but back to the G1000, so uh, in looking at putting this, this in the G1000, what I like to do, the reason I'm wearing gloves right now is because I don't want to get uh, a bunch of fingerprints and everything all over the screen. Uh, so I actually wear gloves uh, when I'm dealing with a lot of these components, but basically you just take it, you put it in, you want it to be pretty square when you, when you want to put it in. Um, and then you just put, push it in there. Really smooth, so it's it's pushed in now. Uh, sometimes it's it's a little bit looser where it's not this really nice tight snug fit. So what you want to prevent is it from falling back forward while you're installing it. That's what you want to prevent. So be be very careful when installing these here. So we got the screws, we got the Torx. Once again, we provide all of these things uh, to you. I'm going to flip the panel around, and so. So 
But now with the panel flipped around, you can see the four areas where those screws are gonna go. I like to just take these and we'll just start in one corner. Just go ahead, tighten it down just a very little bit. Where you're not trying to get it really tight. Very, very loose. And you, what you wanna do is you wanna do an alternating pattern. So you wanna go bottom left, then you wanna go right up here, the top right. So just real light pressure is key. It doesn't need to be anything too much at all. Good. Perfect. So there you go. So now, that thing is mounted right in there. Really nice, really smooth. And so now, the audio panel. So the audio panel, you can see it's kind of the sandwich design. It's got these brackets here. What we'll do here with the audio panel, so I'll actually take this apart right here like so. Once again, with the audio panel, once you put it in, you don't want it to fall forward and fall out. You just kind of keep it in there. What I'd actually do is just kind of put it down. But what you want to do next is you want to actually loosen up these standoffs. So if you loosen up these standoffs, you don't want to take them totally out, but you just want to reduce them a bit. I'm trying to take into consideration the panel thickness and any other variants. So just kind of like that, should be pretty good. And then we want to load up our next screw here. And now with all this right like so, put that in so like that, put the screw through there and now we have this whole piece here. Hold it all together with your finger. I like to do the top one first. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Put it in. Square it all up. There you go. Get those thin ups. Once again, it does not require a lot of tight tightness. I mean that, that thing is locked and loaded. I'm gonna actually reduce off of here just a little bit. Just give it a little bit of place. So that 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 is in there really tight. It's not going anywhere. Go ahead and repeat for the bottom. And once again, this just requires a single USB here for the audio panel. The uh, one thousand. So I'll go ahead and loosen these guys up. We're gonna get a little bit larger size.
And there you go. Now the audio panel is in and secure. Flip it around, you can see it. And that's in, not going anywhere whatsoever. So that looks really, really quite nice. Once again, buttons and audio panel feel really good. All right, so that's how you put the G1000 in. Pretty straightforward. We'll put the last one in here and we'll be good to go. We'll catch you guys later. Stay level.